Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. In the last episode, we got all of the prep work done, we have a full suit of armor now, we completed the last side mission, we've done all of the planet scanning we can, it is time to make a start on the DLC. So let's, let's head straight down to the kick. I don't believe I said which DLC I'll be doing first, so... Drum roll, no please. Twice, That's very nice, Kelly. But yes, drum roll, please. The DLC we will be heading to is... I don't know why I'm trying to amp up the tension. I probably named this episode the DLC. It is Project Overlord in the Phoenix Massing. Now then, before I forget, am I... We need probes? That's right, stop me up. Going up to 60, there we are. Now then, I believe, if I remember correctly, the in-game reason why Shepard is doing this is because, you know, Shepard is an employee of Cerberus. And the elusive man sent them a message saying, hey, excuse me, there we go. Um, you know, hey, Shepard, you're my employee, so if you could please go take a look at um this facility we've got, shit's going down there. If you could go take a look at it, make sure everything's okay, you know, I'd be really grateful. One second. Ponos. Ponos is a typical hydrogen helium gas giant. Its once vital helium-3 refining machinery in orbit around the planet was destroyed in one of Ite's many wars, and Ite's extraplanetary trade suffered severely as a result. The dictators of Ite are not pleased with this situation, but they consider it a bad strategic move to be the first to start work on a refinery before eliminating any chance of other nations or planets seizing it. Orbital distance, 5.8 AU. Orbital period, 14.0 Earth years. Radius, 69,740 kilometers. Day length, 14.4 Earth hours. But yeah, if, if I remember correctly, the elusive man asked Shepard, hey, as you're an em employee of Cerberus, please go and, you know, make sure that this, this Project Overlord doodad is, you know, okay, make sure it's safe. Now, obviously, Naomi, is not an employee of Cerberus. She is their slave. That That is how she considers their relationship to be. She is enslaved by Cerberus. And obviously she has no interest in oh, no making sure that Project Overlord is okay. She has absolutely no, no desire to make sure that this facility is up and running. So why is she going to do this? She's going there to gather evidence. She is going there to gather evidence because let's be honest, all of Cerberus's, all of Cerberus's projects, oh hello, all of the projects they've done have been abusive in some way. We literally have not seen an ethical project of Cerberus's. So she is willing to bet, she would bet her entire bank account if she had access to it, that they're probably up to some shady ass shit down there. They are probably up to something that is, you know, morally bankrupt. And she is going there to gather evidence. Morose. Morose is a small rock planet with a thin nitrogen and carbon monoxide atmosphere. Each city-state of Ite claims the rights to exploit the planet for its heavy metal deposits. Individual city-state governments maintain three small habitats on Morose, as far away from one another as possible. Nevertheless, the planet's wars have extended here, and the habitats infrequently send commando teams to assault each other in small unit actions. Travel advisory. The inhabitants of Morose have set large numbers of anti-personnel and anti-vehicular mines at common choke points across the planet. Records of the mines' locations are extremely unreliable. Civilian travel is not advised. Colony founded 2150. Population 27,800. Capital none. Orbital distance, 2.9 AU. Orbital period, 4.9 Earth years. Radius, 4,025 kilometers. Day length, 60.7 Earth hours. 
atmospheric pressure, 0.16 Earth atmospheres, surface temperature, negative 73 Celsius, surface gravity, 0.35 G. But yeah, she, she is going there with the intention of gathering evidence. She's taking pictures. She's getting, you know, videos of it. Also that she can hopefully send it to Anderson, hack it, you know, whoever. Someone who might be able to get some justice here. If there is any way that we can, like, if there is a fail state for this DLC where, you know, you fuck over the facility... And this, that, and the other. Naomi is going to do that. Probe launched. If there is any way that we can shut the facility down Probe away. and just fuck over Cerberus, Naomi is looking for it. Those, those are Naomi's intentions going into this DLC. She's like, oh yes, Mr. Elusive Man. Mm -hmm. I'll totally go and save the facility. I'm not planning on exploding it or anything. I haven't asked Jack how she made the bomb that destroyed her facility on Pragia. No, 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 I totally haven't done that. I've totally not done that. You can trust me. You can totally trust me, sir. <laughs> Launching probe. Ooh, I'm excited. Um, I'm excited to get into the DLCs. Anyone else? Any other big spikes? Nah, nah, we'll leave it at that. And you there. Echidna. A so-called hot Neptune planet, Echidna rapidly orbits the star Typhon at a nose-to-nose -nose distance, much like a Pegasid or hot Jupiter. Also like the Pegasids, it is believed to have formed further out and gradually migrated to its present position. Its core is higher in rock content than Sol's Neptune, the consequence of attracting asteroids and other debris as it journeyed through its solar system. Orbital distance 0.2 AU. Orbital period 36.5 Earth days. Radius 23,307 kilometers. Day length 14.7 Earth hours. Okay, and you are. Oh, hello! Launching probe. Thank you kindly. Oh my gosh. Probe away. Uh, has that ever happened before? We've gotten we've gotten a bit of everything, my goodness. Echidna, thank you. Echidna approves of Naomi's mission. Echidna is like, yeah, go fuck over Cerberus. Go fuck over Cerberus. Have a little bit of everything. Have some Ezo. I see you, Echidna. I see that you are an ally against Cerberus. Ooh. Yes, please. Probe launched. And... Okay, that, that's nice. I'll take you. Probe away. And there we go. Okay. Lovely jubbly. Ait. Ait is an Earth-like world with a variety of habitable land, ranging from deserts to jungles to tundra. It also possesses faint rings, an unusual feature for a non-giant planet. The rings contain rocks up to a meter in length and a wide dust cloud that stretches nearly 23,000 kilometers from the center of the planet. This impressive celestial phenomenon, however, is dwarfed by the fact that Ait's largest moon, Latai is in an unstable orbit and is predicted to impact the planet within the next two centuries. Knowing that any item venture is living on borrowed time, colonial population and investment has been orders of magnitude less than any other glo- Let's try that again. Knowing that any item venture is living on borrowed time, colonial population and investment has been orders of magnitude less than other garden worlds. Colony founded, 2104. Population, 1,540,000, I think. Capital, Adras Adrastea, disputed. Orbital distance, 1.4 AU. Orbital period, 1.7 Earth years. Radius, 5,941 kilometers. 
Day length, 24.9 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, 0.6 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, 20 Celsius. Surface gravity, 0.88 G. Now then, as, as we are going to fuck over Cerberus, I could see an argument for bringing Miranda, you know, like, oh yeah, we're totally here to help. See, we've got, we've got Miranda. She's super loyal to Cerberus. Like, you, you just pay attention to her. Don't pay attention to what I'm doing. I'm not filming all of your shit. Like, I could see an argument for that. However, I... <laughs> I've, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I don't view Naomi as particularly stealthy. I think that... I, I think that Naomi is relatively honest in, you know, how she presents herself. If she's going there to fuck up their shit, I don't think she'd hide it. Like, oh, you want to prevent me from fucking up your shit? Stop me. Shoot me. Stop me. Like, I'm not gonna hide why I'm here. In which case, let's, let's bring our fuck up Cerberus team. Tali and Jack, they, they are our go-to ladies. They will help us fuck up Cerberus. leisurely pace sir also hello Logan. hello Logan. good to hear from you again i'm i'm just trying to loot don't mind me oh this is nice this is beautiful okay shall shall we go and attempt to retract the dish let's let's just see what's what's over here first doesn't look like anything okay okay in we go No, thank you. Ooh. Over here. On the monitor. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Um, under normal circumstances, I'd say, oh my god, I'm so sorry for your loss, but these, these are Cerberus. No, fuck them. Fuck them. They deserved it. Ah, there you are. I've locked myself in a computer room on the far side of the base. There are Geth on the loose. A rogue VI program has seized control and... I've lost a lot of friends today. I'd hate to see you join them. Please, watch yourself. Sir? Sir, you are not my friend. You are Cerberus. Uh, two? Hold up, hold up. I'm, I'm not going that way yet. I'm just I'm just seeing if there's anything to loot. Um, why are there geth here? Why? You see, the fact the fact that there are geth here, I'm pausing because this announcement keeps playing. And um, the fact that there are geth here, did the geth arrive here after the facility, you know, kind of went a bit fucky wucky, or were they experimenting on the geth? Because that is a very Cerberus thing to do. I'm just saying. I. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Access denied, door secure from the inside. Okay. Well, I mean... Oh, hello. Well, I mean, there's... There seems to be stuff in there. I would... This is a secure facility. All weapons must be declared upon entry and checked with security personnel on duty. Hello. Status report. Please inform the elusive man that we've made great strides in our research. His doubts about the lack of progress are unwarranted. A demonstration is forthcoming. Mm, what were you... What were you investigating here? What were you researching? I... I don't like that. I don't know. 
No, thank you. I. Um... It could also it could also be the creepy music. We've got some very creepy music over this. But I am, I'm I'm on edge. I am very much so on edge here. This is uh. I I find this sus. I find this very sus. Let's let's listen to this first. Power to all project personnel. I understand there's some concern about handling life, Geth. I agree it's a risk, but the potential reward is far greater. Someday your sons and daughters will thank you. I saw the word Geth before I heard it, and I literally face palmed. I don't fuck with the Geth. Why is that so difficult for people to understand? Okay. getting killed who gives a fuck but a a rogue cerberus vi trying to upload itself i i'm sorry that that noise is freaking me out and um, yeah a, a rogue get the big detected okay yeah a rogue vi trying to upload itself elsewhere a cerberus AI? yeah no. no okay now we have an actual problem now naomi is invested Let's just head down. Oh. C can y'all not do that? Can y'all not scare the shit out of me, please? Welcome. Today's lunch special is very filling with dynamic egg salad. Oh. That, that's my favorite type of. Oh, hello. Oh, oh. 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 Um. I noticed the green glow. I noticed the green glow. Okay. Okay, well, let's... You do one of them. Um... Da -da -da. Okay, we, we are on the uh, synthetic shot. That's good. You... One of them on you. And... We'll hold off for now. No, you don't. Okay, hello? I mean, no, it, it's a shield. It's a shield, not a bioptic barrier. Also, you, no thank you. No thank you. Oh. I'm just I'm trying to see if there's a better a better point I can get to. Not really. Not really. Excuse me. What the hell out? Okay. Oh, you're you're still alive. Not today. Okay, okay. I think we're good. Another let's see we have. Yeah, I think we're trying to get up there. Okay. I mean, let's. Let's have a quick explore. Oh, what? Excuse you. Much offence. Much offence. Um, one of them. One of them. And you know what? One of them. Why not? Okay. Load and 
Oh, Ta Tali! Tali, you brave go! Nice. Nicely done, girl. Oh, ex Hello there. a good idea who told them that this would be a good idea i hello i hear you i hear you over there hello not today ah. oh, okay go one of them go for the optics yes go for the optics I, I think that was Chad Zika. Oh no! They killed Chad Zika! I am offended. I am offended on the drone's behalf. Okay, okay. Back up. That's where we were. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I went back to listen to that log. Okay. Come on, people. Oh. Such lovely music. 
Which in a way just makes this all the more terrifying. And yeah. Yeah, I, I need all the metagel. I used an awful lot of it in um, in the in the mission with the mechs. Okay, yeah, come on. Damn it all. He's aligning the dish to a new upload target. He'll have a clear line of sight to our satellite. This is gonna be tight. Oh dear. Okay, well, you know what? I've only got about four minutes left on my timer, so I think this would be a good place to end off the episode. Let's read some codex entries first. Nothing new there. Okay. Kinetic barriers, shields. Kinetic barriers, commonly called shields, provide protection against most mass accelerator weapons. Whether on a starship or a soldier's suit of armor, the basic principle remains the same. Kinetic barriers are repulsive mass effect shields projected from tiny emitters. These shields safely deflect small objects traveling at rapid velocities. This affords protection from bullets and other dangerous projectiles, but still allows the user to sit down without knocking away their chair. The shielding afforded by kinetic barriers does not protect against extremes of temperature, toxins, or radiation. Mass accelerators. A mass accelerator propels a solid metal slug using precisely controlled electromagnetic attraction and repulsion. The slug is designed to squash or shatter on impact, increasing the energy it transfers to the target. If this were not the case, it would simply punch a hole right through, doing minimal damage. Accelerator design was revolutionized by Element Zero. A slug lightened by a mass effect field can be accelerated to greater speeds, permitting projectile velocities that were previously unattainable. If accelerated to a high enough velocity, a simple paint chip can impact with the same destructive force as a nuclear weapon. However, mass accelerators produce recoil equal to their impact energy. This is mitigated somewhat by the mass effect fields that rounds are suspended within, but weapon recoil is still the prime limiting factor on slug velocity. And small arms. Modern infantry weapons are micro-scaled mass accelerators, using mass-reducing fields and magnetic force to propel miniature slugs to lethal speeds. Nearly every gun on the battlefield is laden with features, from targeting auto-assist to projectile shavers that can generate thousands of rounds of ammunition from a small internal block of metal. It was long thought that personal weapons had plateaued in performance, but the Geth proved all theories wrong. Mathematically reviewing their combat logs, the Geth found that in an age of kinetic barriers, most firefights were won by the side who could put the most rounds down range the fastest but combatants were forced to deliberately shoot slower to manage waste heat or pause as their weapons vented. To eliminate this inefficiency, the Geth adopted detachable heat sinks known as thermal clips. While organic arms manufacturers were initially doubtful that this would produce a net gain, a well-trained soldier can eject and swap thermal clips in under a second. Faced with superior enemy firepower, organic armies soon followed the Geth's lead. And today's battlefields are littered with these thermal clips. Lovely. And that, that is all the codex entries done. Okay. In the next episode, we see if we can destroy the antenna. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.